Welcome to Act of Dad, the Awesome Dad Show. I am your host, Mark Savant. Today, I am joined by someone that I'm thrilled to chat with. He is a professional filmmaker, if you would. Awesome dad, just living his best life. When I think about Act of Dads, I think about dads getting out there, high energy, enjoying the moments now. And I don't think anyone does that quite as well as Mr. Heber Cannons. Heber, what is up? What's up, guys? How are you, man? Man, I am just living my best life, and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your busy day, your busy schedule, to join me. Um, I think this interview could go a lot of different ways, Heber, but yeah. I want to start here. I think of you as a storyteller. So, Heber, what is your favorite story to either tell or read to your kids? Ooh, um, I think lately we've been diving into the Star Wars Star Wars realm. You know, they're, my kids are five and three, so we've been diving into... Uh, to just kind of the, the whole canon, if you will, of all nine, eight to this point, Star Wars movies. Um, and so we just got a whole bunch of little books that kind of go along with the movies. And we've been, we've been diving into a galaxy far, far away, if you will. Good versus evil, yin and yang, all of that good stuff. All of it, yep. Love that. Love that. So, Heber, we so we've I've been following your page on Instagram for quite some time, and I got to say you have a really unique, really exciting look. I just want to ask I want to ask you. Well, let's, look, let's start here. How how do you say three and five? Um, you are you married? What's your what's your relationship like there? Yep, married, happily married. We just celebrated our ten year anniversary over the weekend. Congrats, and, dude! That's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, two dudes, Maverick and Finley, five and three. Very cool. So married, I've been together with my wife over 10, married for five. We have a three-year-old and a three-month-old. So we're going through that process. Um, but the way that you celebrate dad life on your Instagram is really special. It's really powerful to watch. How'd you come up with that kind of theme? Um, I can't remember what it was. It was a few years ago. I just discovered an app where I could do it on my phone. So for those that don't know, I, I are you talking about like the laser beams and dinosaurs and all that? Sure. Laser beam, dinosaurs jumping over things yeah so we we have um yeah i downloaded an app where i could add dinosaurs and explosions to some of my photos and i was doing it for fun uh and i got it to um i got to a point where it was my it was maverick's birthday i think he was turning three maybe okay. two but i think three and i made like eight or nine of these pictures and I printed them out and put them around the, the party so that, that all of his friends could see and appreciate his version of what the world was like. And then I thought they were kind of fun. So I started putting them on my Instagram where you could see a normal picture and then swipe to the right and see the version of what my kids see whenever we were playing. And uh, so now I've got, I think like, I don't know, like 60 or 70 throughout my Instagram page of me with my kids in one photo and then you swipe to the right and you can see the version that they're seeing or some of them are the first picture within a carousel yeah i've never seen anyone do that on instagram there's obviously a lot of a lot of pages and accounts out there but i've never seen anyone do it quite as well as you do there's a lot of like photoshop stuff going on but just inserting a couple dinosaurs and some laser beams and some rocket ships kind of uh kind of uh opens up the imagination right yep yep exactly Love and that. now, now my kids actually they'll take my phone and they'll do it themselves. They'll they'll that insert dinosaurs in. I take it to the next level when I'm actually preparing like a photo for Instagram. Like I'll people are like, how do you do it? And I'm like, well, I use this app, but that's like the starting place. Then I go back to Photoshop. Then I go to Lightroom. And then I come back to Photoshop. And then I go to this little program called Snapseed. And then I got to go back to form Photoshop to format it. And then I put it in Instagram. So it's like a, it's a whole process. Right. Well, for someone like you who spends so much time creating the, the best high quality content, I mean, you've had three CrossFit documentaries ranked in the top 100 bestsellers on iTunes, right? Actually four. So I've had four movies that went on to iTunes and the documentary, like, yeah, they're the top 100 bestselling documentaries of all time on, on iTunes. So when, I think when you're creating content of that kind of caliber, you got to take Instagram to the next level, right? right. He's got to. Right. No, I'm, I'm with you there. What's that app that you use to do the initial photo? I, I yeah, like to use Canva. Lens, is that... Lens FX. Lens FX. Cool. I'm going to write that one down. That sounds yeah. like a cool thing. Yeah, L-E-N-S-F-X. 
And I think anyone out there, if you're ever interested in trying something new, don't be discouraged by someone like Heber, who's using the whole Adobe suite and doing all this post-production stuff. Just start, just do something fun. Um, and definitely check out Heber's Instagram because it is really dope. It's very unique, really digging that vibe. Thank you. So Heber, how did you get into CrossFit initially? Because that's another thing that I think really uh, defines how you are as a, as a person with your family and whatnot. It seems like CrossFit gives you a lot of joy, a lot of energy. Would you say that's true? Yeah, I, I would say just not not even just CrossFit, but just fitness in general. Like I'm a huge fitness enthusiast. I love working out. I love the endorphins I get from a hard workout, whether it's doing a Metcon from, from CrossFit or pure strength and conditioning or you know even just doing a good old bodybuilding pump session you know like i just like the i like the feel of it and so um i got into doing crossfit back before it was a buzzword i probably the biggest description that i could tell you about my job there was when i started with crossfit i had to tell everyone what crossfit was no one knew what it was they always <laughs> they, they all thought it was p90x and i'm like no it's not p90x um and well they, they implement i think what's really unique about crossfit is the community right yeah. p90x just kind of like watch video at home crossfit's about community building right right it's about working out with others pushing others like you you go to your box as they call it and you build a relationship with the people that are around you um it's become a new place for people to uh, meet and build a date there's a big dating scene in the crossfit world. i think there's dating apps in there um just for crossfitters uh, it's a big community. So like you go to a box, it becomes like your dojo. They're, they're your people. And you, you, you know, if you're really committed and, and hang out, it's a great place to meet people and find friends when you move to a new city. Anytime I go to a new city, I drop into a CrossFit box and automatically I have friends that think the same, we talk the same and, and they know exactly what kind of restaurants I want to go to. So, you know, I get all the things I want to when I drop into one little place. That's really cool. And I think really important for dads to uh, surround themselves with the right community. You, I think that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So by getting involved in, in a community of like-minded people like CrossFit, that can help take your game to the next level, right? Help improve yourself to the next level. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it helps a lot to have that. And then also it just helps to, I don't know, for me, a, a big part of where I choose to go to work out is I wanna be able to go to a gym where I can take my kids and yeah. have them see what I'm doing because then they want to emulate it and do it. So like, um, uh, so do your kids go to their, your gym with you? They work out with you at, at the gym often? No, I, I mean, the, uh, it depends on where I'm going. So, so sometimes some gyms don't like, they're not cool with that. So, you know, they just hide out in the little kid's room, but then, um, other gyms where I have like a full weight set and, and an airdyne bike and barbells in my garage right now. And so if I go out and I work out, I'll get the little kid's barbell out and and I'll be doing something. I'll look back and Finley's got the barbell on his back and he's trying to do lunges too, you know? So like they try to do what I do if the setting is, is okay for them to do that. Do you find that when you're doing those home workouts that your kids end up being an extra weight for you to lift? I found that to be true in my house. I think it depends on the workout. Some some workouts, um, I would allow that. Other workouts, it becomes quite dangerous for them to be around when I'm lifting a heavy barbell. And so we set parameters. And, and if it's a workout, they can come and jump on me. They, they come, for sure come and jump on me. But probably about 50% of the time, I'm, I'm for safety reasons, I tell them to stay away, keep their distance. Yeah. Yeah, I find when I try to do burpees at home and my daughter sees it happening, she's she's all into it. I, I feel like kids are really attracted to high energy, which is one of the reasons why I'm, I really feel like what you're doing and what Acted Dad is about is important. Because yeah. to me, it feels like there's a stereotype uh, behind becoming a father in that you're no longer going to have the chisel labs or 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 be able to do the things you, you've loved doing, like wakeboarding or skateboarding or playing football or basketball. It just seems like there's a stigma that you're past your prime. Do you find that to be true yourself? Yeah, like I, I thought when you had your baby that you just got like some not uh, some New Balance 501s. Right. Real and like a spatula. I think that just comes with the kid. Uh, no, yeah, I agree. Like I think one thing for me, especially with health, is is I loved when the hashtag dad bod became a thing. And I was like, no, that's not okay with me. I'm not. 
I, not that I care about the chiseled abs and whatnot. I just like to feel healthy. Um, and sure, there's probably an element of vanity in that, but but I want to be able to run and play with my kids when they're old. I want to be pushing them when they're 18, not not decrepit and in the way. And so, for me, very much part of my physical training is to a keep energy to be able to keep up with them now, and also a longevity thing where I want to be able to keep up with them when I'm, you know, in my 50s and 60s. And sure. A, a, look, a body in motion stays in motion. Yeah. So if you don't move it, you lose it. I'm I'm at kind of like that stage right now. We just had our three month old, so I'm trying to to burn off the pregnancy diet, which spilled over from my wife onto my uh, plate quite often, as as it were. But I I'm I'm always trying to find unique ways that I can maybe not necessarily work out, but exercise, keep my body moving, while also spending quality time with my kid. And, and with kids that are in that toddler age, what are some activities that you like to do that you bring your kids in on? Do you have any examples of that? Yeah, actually, the other day I went to the track. We just took our two dudes to the track, and I said, hey, this is your playground. You have a football field to play in, and you can run on this track if you want. And so they did some quick races, and they quickly got bored of that, and then they played in the corner while I I brought dumbbells there, and I was running 400 meters and doing uh, dumbbell snatches and, and – uh, would stop and, and talk to them briefly on, on my 400 meter loop and make sure they were good and keep going. So I kept my heart rate high for 30 minutes while I was doing that and running around chasing them for the first 10 <laughs> and got myself in a, an awesome workout in under 45 minutes. Solid, solid. You just gotta, you just gotta move it quick. And does it, like you said, it can just be a track and field play park, right? It doesn't need to be an actual gym if, if you can't get there. It's hard for me as a dad and doing all these different things, it's hard to get to the gym regularly, um, which I think is another reason why the dad bod ends up occurring. Yeah, I think you're so, working and you wanna spend time with your kids, like it, it's natural to happen. Is that kind of, I mean, maybe you weren't thinking about this when you started making your CrossFit documentaries and in, in your movies, te- before you started telling stories, right? But do you feel like your profession now of being a storyteller and creating documentaries has, allowed you to have more quality time with your kids? Um, yes and no. So recently, uh, yes and no. So, so I have a lot of time with my kids, um, but I also no longer work at CrossFit. I've been producing my own. Um, I'm produ- so the documentaries that I've made in the past that have been on iTunes and Netflix – I made while working for CrossFit. I no longer work there, but I'm self-producing a new documentary, and I'm also producing like some call it a vlog, but it's bigger. You know, just like my photos are kind of a lot high production. It's a very right. high production YouTube channel that we have called the Buttery Bros. Um, and because of those two things happening in the last nine months, it's been a very chaotic nine months. And I think my time with my kids has been down a little bit from where I would like it to be, but I'm working towards a place where I can be there for them at all times. And so, yes, uh, filmmaking is not something I would, I'm very lucky that my job is, I'm my own boss. I can be kind of where I need to if I really need to be somewhere. Um, But if you actually are making like Hollywood movies, it's not a great job for parents. (laughs) Right, late nights on on scene and, uh, or late days on scene, late nights doing the editing. Yeah, well, um, if, you're actually, if you're actually doing, you're you know, you're on, you're out of the house for three months at a time in production, and then you get back and you go right into post production, and you're working twelve, fourteen hour days. So it's like that job can be pretty gnarly. What I'm doing is, like, I was up till four in the morning editing a new show that we're putting out today at noon, and then I woke up thirty minutes ago to my kid jumping on my head and and a reminder to hop onto this podcast. So um, juggling a lot of hats. <laughs> Yeah, and this is something that comes up a lot in the episodes is juggling time because as a busy dad, you have responsibility to provide for the family, but you also have responsibility to spend that quality time with them. So I've gotten a lot of different feedback from different dads. And one of the things that I found true is just trying to live in the season. Like like you said, maybe you batch your content creation, all the Buttery Bros, which by the way, Buttery Bros is a very, very cool YouTube site. It kind of spills over that vibe from the Hebrews Instagram over to, to YouTube. Um, but try it's really cool just to get that behind the scenes of what life is like as an awesome dad, high action, high activity, 
uh, high quality video content. So that's that's anyway what I really like about what you're doing there. Um, so uh, another question for you here. By creating high quality documentaries and by traveling around and meeting all these great people, different CrossFit locations, do you feel like that's helped you to grow by surrounding yourself with people like that? Yeah, I think you, you learn a lot traveling and you learn a lot about other people's cultures and an appreciation for people in general. Um, and you learn about parenting and, and I see um, how certain people educate their kids or how they deal with them. And I, I'm like, oh, I want to take that home and be like that with my kids or I'll film, especially when I was working in the, in the CrossFit space. And I still am a lot um, like uh, last May, I shot a commercial for a company where I was following a dad and his two sons around all day. And I learned a lot about how he interacted with his boys and how they had gym time and how it worked for them when their kids were a little bit older than mine, where where they they wanted some structure in their fitness but not a full hour so how i learned how he did that um but like beyond that beyond like just gym stuff um i travel internationally i see how things are done in iceland or australia or um just anywhere you go really any country you go to you I, i'm always looking for tips and tricks on on how parents are dealing with their kids and how I can be a better father for my boys. Yeah, setting setting a be a role model, I think, yeah. is probably one of the biggest things that that I've learned. Um, absolutely. So, what's an example? What's what's an example of a way that you've helped inspire kids to be a little bit better? I, so, let me contextualize this just a little bit for you, Heber. The other day, I was interviewing another dad um, has a cool dad YouTube channel, and he had mentioned that instead of telling his kids that he is proud of them. He encourages them to say they are proud of themselves. And that was an interesting takeaway that I got because I always think of our, our, our job as fathers to empower them to be confident in themselves, right? Because in a world full of all this outside noise, it's important to know who you are, right? So what are some ways that you've helped to inspire your kids and empower them to be better? Oh, we push them all the time um, into whatever they're interested in. So Finley right now is super into building trains. So we, we, you know, we make everything available for him to have trains. Maverick is really artistic and loves drawing. And so we make sure we set apart like 30 minutes to an hour a day where we have just kind of quiet time with a table available and markers. And my wife is really talented with that as well. So she'll sit down and help him draw and learn. And um, very high praise on all those things that they're doing but also trying to educate them so they don't, you know, like they always want to be better. And so that's, you know, for myself, I always try to, to happy, but hungry is one of my friends sayings. Um, I try to encourage that with my kids, like, Hey, this is awesome. Let's try it this way too. So we can, we can become better and know that like, Hey, what you're doing is really cool. What can we do to make it cooler? Yeah. Like hang it up on the wall and make a big deal out of it. We just started giving away stars whenever my daughter does something good during the week. We give her a little star, and yep. for some reason, getting that little star sticker makes a difference in their life, yeah. right? <laughs> makes uh, a difference. One of the stars that we have this is a, this is a good segue into another question here, Heber. Is revolved around eating your veggies. So, as someone who's really into being physically fit, being your best self, how do you get your kids to get on board with eating right? How do you do that? Uh, dude, that's one thing I have not mastered i'm not very good about getting my kids eat well i uh yeah but i don't know that's something that uh we work on regularly um for me i'm at a point where i look at my kids energy levels and i'm like i don't know that they need any more energy um <laughs> and so i think they're getting the food that they need i think that's one thing i think a lot of people overthink the food thing i think as long as you're not stuffing candy down their face and you you um yeah, I think as long as you look at what they're eating and they're for me, like the big things that I always push for Maverick and Finley is is protein. That's like the you know, veggies, you know, it's a carbohydrate. Every child is probably getting enough carbohydrates today. But if they're not getting their protein or fat, it can't balance the meal out. And so I encourage my kids very heavily that they need their protein if they wanna if they wanna be big like big and strong. 
<laughs> there you go. What's that go-to protein? Like grilled chicken? Uh, what, yeah, what they, love, they love chicken. They love grilled chicken. Uh, Finley loves barbecue chicken. So I'm always like, we're having barbecue chicken. And he's like, okay. And it's really just chicken with barbecue sauce dipped in it. Uh, and then Maverick is a big fan of cheese or yogurts. Um, and then every now and then he, he loves chicken fingers. Um, yep. And that's kind of our go-to for for those two. Yeah, basically just chicken fingers and cheese and yogurts. Do you ever pretend to be a dinosaur when you're eating them to get the kids into it? Be like, all right, I'm a T-Rex and I'm just going to rip apart at this chicken. You ever try that? I got Actually, my- I haven't, but they do it automatically. Like, I'll be <laughs> like, hey, show me a T-Rex bite and they'll they'll go into character, you know? Make it, I find it like if you can turn things into a game for the kids, they're much more into it. Rather than being the boss and saying like, do this, do this, do that. Like saying, hey, pick up your clothes. Instead of that, you might say, how quickly can you pick up your clothes? Yeah. And you're turning things into a game, I think is interesting. It's, it's someone who uh, has done a lot of competition and certainly thinks about time a lot when you're, when you're editing. Are there ways that you, you kind of, uh, have you ever like implemented a stop stopwatch or stop clock to get the kids moving quickly is that something you ever thought oh, about oh all the time we time every we time putting on shoes or eating or um if you can do this in under 10 minutes or five minutes we'll watch a movie or you know like i always have my against a clock um but like you just said like it's it's got to be how you present things and what so, kind of how so what kind of stopwatch do you have? You have like something for your watch or your phone well, or just I, I app just, like I just my phone. Got it. So See, I, timers I, on, kids. Yeah. Like it's it, it not only for like that, but also like when you're getting to go somewhere, we always give them a five minute warning, a two minute warning, and then like, hey, we're we're getting out of here warning. Um yeah. and so yeah, they're they're very aware of the clock and that's I don't know if that's from my background in, in competing and in timing things, but yeah, we do that quite a bit, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, kids, it's been my experience that kids really have no grasp on time. Five minutes means 30 minutes or or, or something as is, is, is small as picking up a few pairs of clothes is like 20 minutes worth of <laughs> lamenting their, their catastrophe of having to pick up clothing. Kids are, yep. to- toddlers are peculiar creatures, to yep. be certain. So what is your favorite activity? If you could, if you could go out, Quick rapid fire question. If you could go out and do one activity with your kids, where what would you do? What would Boating. It be? Boating. Well, and I think that goes for kids at any age where uh, if you're on a boat, uh, and this is something my family did a lot growing up. If you're on a boat, you're all together and everyone most of the time is having fun and mm-hmm. and you're away from society. Like it's a, it's a weird place. It's like one of the only places like cars, you can't really do it well. But there's this great interaction you have with family or friends when you're on a boat, water skiing, wakeboarding, wake surfing, where you know you can kind of break off into different sections of the boat, but you're usually together. You're usually in places with bad cell phone service, and um, when someone's wake surfing, you're encouraging them or or you're cheering them on. And then when they're done, everyone's joking around with each other. And for me and my family growing up, and with my kids now. It's always been a great place for for relationships to have been built. It's funny that you say that, Heber, because I understand exactly what you're saying. You're you're away from all the distractions and you're focused on just the human beings that are on that small vessel. Yeah, um, I never thought about it that way, but that's but that's really that's really true. It, it, you can also have a lot of fun on a boat, obviously, like you said, wake surfing and. Um, skiing and wakeboarding and inner tubing and all those fun activities. Did you grow up around that stuff? Do you, is that why you put such a, an importance on it? Yeah. I mean, so we grew up here in Utah um, and I, we had a boat growing up for a few years and then got rid of it for a few years and then got it back in the middle of high school. And so, uh, yeah, we grew up around boats. I love boating. Is that why you're so good at the wakeboarding? Because when you, I, I saw that uh, video on Instagram where you've got your kid in one arm and you're hanging on to the, the wakeboard and the other one. How did you convince your wife to let you do that? <laughs> uh, I think she, yeah, I'm very comfortable in the water. And she, it was actually not wakeboard. It was wake surfing, which is a little easier to do. Wakeboarding actually wouldn't be that bad. But wake surfing, <laughs> you're, not going, you're not going that fast. So it's not, it's not 
too terrible to to have any problems with it. The kids, it was a little cold. They weren't they weren't excited about the cold of the water but, uh, on that specific trip. But we've gone again and they love it. Yeah, right they, on. they love the boat. Right on, right on. Very cool tip. Love that. Love that. So what is so? Let, let me get into a little bit into your exercise routine. What is your favorite exercise, Heber? If you could do any exercise, what would it be? Oh man, probably just bench press. But Straight. but I like to combine things. Like it's never just one thing. Like I like bench press, but I like to do it when I'm breathing heavy, just to challenge it a little more. So like I love doing rowing right into bench press is a fun little combination of a push and a pull or um or even just like an airdyne bike right into bench press so you're just completely out of, out of breath and can't breathe but then you're trying to stabilize and push heavy weight as well good one high 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 heart rate type action there good what about your worst favorite what's the one exercise that you just you just don't want to do um, I don't know. So it sounds kind of cliche, but I always like to work my weaknesses. So, so I don't know that I have a least favorite exercise. Um, there's one, so like, uh, Airdyne sprints or assault bike sprints is the name of the new bike company. Basically it's just like a, it's a bike where you go like this with your hands. Yeah. Uh, sprinting on those for some reason, if I go hard for like 45 seconds and then rest like a two to one ratio. So if I go like 30 seconds, rest a minute, attack again for 30 seconds, or even just like a sprint every three minutes, um, mm. that just like, I'm laid out on the floor. I'm like, I have a headache and I can't see straight. And it's typically things like that. Like I'll always do on accident right when my wife needs me to be somewhere. And so I'll be like, babe, I can't, I can't move. I'm stuck on the floor. I need you to come get me. <laughs> I would say, especially after drinking a bunch of milk too. I, I saw this other video where you, you were doing like a milk and cereal or milk and cookies mile challenge. The milk you, and cookies mile. Yep. Not, was, not a finest moment. How'd you get roped into that? Uh, fantasy football league did not go so well for me that year. And so, uh, uh yeah, fantasy, the punishment was typically, uh, the beer mile. I don't drink beer. So they, they, we came up with a solution, which was the milk and cookies mile, um, where I had to run a 400 meter, drink a glass of milk and eat three Oreos. And had I do it to do it again, I would have cut it to like two Oreos and a little bit more milk. Cause I didn't like at the end if you watch the video, I couldn't puke, which if you're drinking uh, beer in front of the mile and you try to puke, you can puke. But I had to like force myself to like, it was too long. <laughs> It was gross. Yeah, it doesn't it does sound like fun, but it was it was funny video to watch. And hey, it could be a lot worse. I've heard of some pretty bad fantasy football league uh, downsides, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, one more one more quick fire question for you, Heber. Favorite dinosaur? What go? Oh, it's got to be the Velociraptor, no question. Nice, nice. Um, what's next, Heber? What's next for you? What's coming next? What are you excited about? What's what's on the horizon? Uh, right now we've got, I've got some traveling coming up. I'm pumped about, uh, I'm going to Aruba next month, uh, going to probably back down to Miami again. Um, so, th so I'm excited about some of those travels, especially cause I get to take my wife and my kids on some of those. Uh, I always love to travel with them. Um, it sucks being away for weeks at a time without them. Uh, and then more buttery bros shows on YouTube. Those are always super fun to make. And, and that's kind of my full-time job now is just traveling around doing fun things on YouTube. And then, um, and then the documentary we're producing, that'll be out probably next year. So like we're in the beginning stages of post-production, which takes quite a lot of time to do. Um, so those between those three things. And then also my kid Maverick just started his first day of, of kindergarten. Ah, so I'm figuring. I'm finding out what it's like to be able to ditch your kid at school for a few hours and then and and <laughs> pretend like you're going to work, but actually just come home and go to sleep. <laughs> hey man, sleep is definitely in short supply as a busy dad. So I feel you yes. on that one. Well, I'll tell you what, Heber, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes, and I am very excited to see all these different things that you're working on. Just really thrilled with it. Definitely check out Heber's Instagram. It is a really cool account. Very unique. Very unique vibe, Heber. Really appreciate that. Um, one more last question before I let all the guests go. One message, one message for a billboard. What is it? You've got a billboard to get a message out to millions of people. Go. Oh man. 
I think about this a lot. Um, I think the the one word I would put up there is optimism. Optimism. So fun, funny story about optimism. When, when I was trying to shape and mold Maverick as a child, um, my go-to movie is the Lego movie because mm. the main character, Emma, is super optimistic. And so for like a year of his life, before he could decide which movie we were watching, we were watching the Lego movie like every day. And I think it worked because he's extremely optimistic and he's super hopeful. And um, for me as an adult, I love that because, you, you know, it, it's very easy to fall into pessimism. It's easy to fall into negativity. And so for him to be excited and encouraged and and loves everything, loves everybody. Um, I don't know if it's because of the Lego movie, but but for me, that was a big that's a big push for me as a father is I want to see my kids be optimistic so that they're never down about themselves and also always building others up. I think that's a great way to conclude the episode. Optimism. That's what I'm going to take away from this episode. Heber, thank you so much for your time. Have an yep. awesome day. Definitely looking forward to what is next. All right. Thanks, man.